Hello, I'm Tom Nickel, the Lead Technical Marketing Engineer for Winova. One of the challenges facing organizations today is the time and expense of IT, not to mention the user downtime, when migrating existing Windows XP endpoints over to Windows 7. Winova has an in-place migration solution that accomplishes this with zero touch by IT and roughly 30 minutes of user downtime. Throughout this video, we'll show you this process from three perspectives the IT administrator creating a Windows 7 image on the reference machine, the IT administrator pushing out the Windows 7 image to end users using the Mirage Management Console, and the endpoint receiving the Windows 7 image. And we'll use these images to highlight which user you're currently viewing throughout our video. We'll start on our Windows 7 reference machine. This is where our IT administrator will install Windows 7 and any other applications or patches that the IT administrator wants in their Windows 7 image. Once the Windows 7 reference machine is ready here, the IT administrator will run a few scripts which Winover provides to prepare this reference machine for use in Windows XP to Windows 7 migrations. After the scripts are run, the IT administrator can run a validation on the reference machine to verify that it is ready to be used for a Windows XP to Windows 7 migration. In this case, our endpoint is not on a domain, so we can ignore these three warnings. But otherwise, we can see that this machine is ready to be used for a Windows 7 base image. We covered how to do this in a previous video, Single Image Management Using One Over Mirage, so let's skip ahead a little. Our IT administrator has completed creating the Windows 7 base image, and they are ready to push it out to some of their end users. Winover provides a wizard to assist the IT administrator with this procedure. After the XP to Win7 migration button is clicked, the IT administrator will be presented with a number of screens. They will first select the Windows 7 base image that they prepared earlier. Next, they will select a Windows XP endpoint or collection of Windows XP endpoints to migrate. After they've done that, the wizard will validate the selections and when the IT administrator clicks finish, the migration from Windows XP to Windows 7 will begin. Let's go to our Windows XP client to see what this looks like from the user's perspective. We're here on the end user's Windows XP device now, so you can see a typical end user experience during our Windows 7 migration process. We sped up the video footage so you can watch our end user in action for the entire process. One of the goals of the Winova Mirage software was to accomplish a Windows 7 migration with as little disruption to the end user as possible. As you can see, the Mirage software is running transparently in the background. All the user can see is our system tray icon here. That means our user is free to continue working while the migration takes place. Any changes this user makes to their data will persist once the migration is complete. And when the migration is ready to proceed, the user will be presented with a reboot option where they can restart immediately or restart later when their work is complete. Let's talk a little bit about what happened before that restart prompt appeared. The Windows XP endpoint downloaded the Windows 7 image that the IT administrator originally selected. To make the download process as efficient as possible, Mirage employs a few key techniques to assist. First, Mirage only transfers data that doesn't already exist on the endpoint. Second, all of the user data is already local, so none of that needs to be transferred again. Third, Mirage's branch reflector feature enables peer-to-peer -peer downloading, which means a remote site can download the Windows 7 image once and then have it distributed to the Windows XP endpoints over the LAN instead of the WAN. As a result of these techniques, network savings are substantial. For the sake of this video, only about 3.3 gigabytes worth of the 6.5 gigabyte image was transferred to the endpoint, for a transfer savings of about 49%. Let's talk a little about our end user again. You might have noticed that they have been working with the Office 27 suite. When the IT administrator was preparing the Windows 7 image for distribution, they also decided to upgrade to the Office 2010 suite at the same time. So when this user logs into their endpoint after rebooting, not only will they have been upgraded to Windows 7, but they'll also have been upgraded to Office 2010 at the same time. Earlier in the video, our user was prompted to restart after the Windows 7 image finished downloading, but our user chose to restart later so they could finish their work first. Our user has been prompted to reboot again, but this time they are going to save their work and proceed with the Windows 7 migration. Once the user reboots the machine, the endpoint will enter our pivot phase, whereby the new Windows 7 image is applied to the endpoint and the old Windows XP image is saved to an alternate location for restore purposes. The machine will boot up into Windows 7 for the first time, 
and a special login screen will be presented to the user. The purpose for this special login screen is because Windows 7 is installing all of the required plug-and-play drivers behind the scenes. Once this process is complete, the machine will reboot again. This time, after the reboot, the previous user account will be added to the Windows 7 system, and the machine will be re-added to a domain if the IT administrator has specified one. When the machine boots up this time, the user account will reappear for the user to log in. Let's bring the frame rate back to normal and log back into the user account. As you can see, the desktop icons are still here, albeit a little cluttered. Let me reorganize them quickly. Okay, much better. As you can see, the icons I had on my Windows XP machine are still here. When I open the My Documents folder, all of my previous user files have been migrated over as well. And when I open the file I modified while the migration process was taking place, you can see that my changes have persisted. And you can even see that the Word document has now opened in Word 2010 instead of Word 2007. Our Windows 7 migration is a complete success, and the end user did not lose any of their files or personalizations, and only faced about 30 minutes worth of downtime while the Windows 7 image was applied to the endpoint.